Well, lucky for you, or maybe not lucky for some. <laughs> there is no shortage of haunted fun this time of year, but Carly found a place that is truly unique. Yeah, that's right. We're talking or we're taking you on a haunted tour of Tampa Theater. I've this heard was things. pretty cool. It's part of their ongoing Halloween series uh, this time of year. Take a look. Good morning, everyone. By now, we know most of you know about Tampa Theater, the gorgeous movie palace here. But did you know it is haunted? Or at least that's what my friend James here says. How are we doing today? Doing great. How are you? This is such a popular series, A Nightmare on Franklin Street. Yes. The gorgeous Franklin Street in downtown Tampa is a little haunted this time of year. It is. Uh, you know, any we're 92 years old this year. Any theater worth itself has a few ghosts, and, and we do too. So we like to take the opportunity in the season to tell people about the spookier side of our history, I guess. It's spooky side, but are they friendly ghosts? I mean, kind of explain sure. the setup here and, and kind of the perspective that you guys, because we know you love this theater. Oh, yes. Yeah, um, all of our ghosts are mischievous at worst, and uh, they do like to play pranks and show themselves off. Uh, we we talk about Fink, our our famous projection room ghost, the most. He's um, he's the one who's the most active here. But yeah, everybody's pretty friendly in general. And then let's go ahead and go on a tour right now to maybe some of these hot spots. Would you? Wh who was the person's name we're looking for? Uh, Fink is our is our main sort of mascot okay. ghost. Uh, but I love telling the story of Fink. We'll get into that <laughs> when we get upstairs. All right, take us around. Sure. <laughs> So we've gone through the theater, we've walked up the stairs, walked through the projection booth, and now tell us where we're at. So this is Fink's kind of domain. Uh, Fink was, I think, the name of a guy named Foster Finley. He was a projectionist here for decades, starting in the 30s. Um, he was a fastidious guy, always wore a suit to work and aftershave and carried the film cans all the way up from where we started to here. And when Fink passed away, um, he liked things a certain way in his projection booth. And so when the other projectionists didn't do that that way, he would slam doors on them or push mugs off of desks, blow in their ears when they were trying to work. Uh, Fink still shows up now and then, especially among the projectionists, but uh, he's always been kind to us and we like to keep him around. Any recent stories? Have you ever, how long have you been at the theater? I've been here about 11 years now. 11 years, has Fink ever showed up and said, hey, <laughs> You're not doing your job as you should be. So the way I like to put it is, I have never had any personal paranormal experiences here, uh, but I've worked with a number of sober and upstanding individuals <laughs> who have had their own experiences and I don't doubt their word, so. Well, Fink, we're gonna leave this spot, hopefully not touch anything, not disrupt anything <laughs> that you wouldn't like. All right, let's go on to the next spot. Sounds good. All right, so we just learned about Fink. Now we're up at the ticket booth, the ticket counter. This I understand is the more real one, like you said. Yes, so the theater, we only have documented evidence of one actual death taking place on the premises of the theater. Uh, that was a gentleman by the name of Robert Green Lanier uh, in the 50s. He was a ticket taker here. Robert had a particular way of tearing tickets. So as he received the ticket from a patron coming in, he kind of spun on his heels and when he turned back around the other way, the ticket was split. It was a little, you know, the show starts on the sidewalk, as okay. we say. So one day, um, it was payday, Robert came into work, picked up his check, and the next time anybody had seen him, uh, he was dead. He had, uh, he was on the ramp where we're standing with the back of his head uh, shattered. So uh, it's unknown whether he fell as he was practicing his special move and busted his head, unfortunately, or if he was, uh, harmed by someone. Nobody ever found his check. Uh, so we have had paranormal investigators come in and find evidence of, uh, of someone in this area wearing a uniform. It took them a while to realize it was an usher's uniform, but we believe Robert is And that's what he would have worn at that yes. time? It looked like a bellboy, basically, like okay. a hotel kind of uniform. Was he wearing that when he was found? Uh, he probably not at the okay. in the morning, but he wore that through his whole career here for decades. Right, and he would have been standing right here. This would have been his job. Absolutely, he was, um, he was a favorite to a lot of our patrons. They remember the, the guy that spun. Wow. All right, well, on to the next place. Yeah. 
Okay, the third and final stop on our ghost tour today has taken us behind the scenes, behind the stage, and one of the dressing rooms. So tell us what goes on here. Yes, so um, in, the in the 80s, I believe 1983, the actor Harry Anderson, you might remember from Night Court, mm -hmm. who was also a stage magician, um, performed here. And when he did, he stationed himself in this dressing room and then decided he had to leave. He was being um, bothered by uh, something that he felt, an entity that he felt here, that he, uh, we eventually came to call the trickster. Um, the downstairs backstage area is covered in pipes and wires mm -hmm. and uh, paranormal investigators have told us that it's what they call a fear cage. It tends to keep uh, EM signals and other sort of difficult to track signals trapped inside and bouncing around within. Uh, we think that's who he probably met right here. I'm, I'm feeling okay. I don't know, have you ever felt weird vibes when you're back here? I haven't, but we have had people get uneasy just being down here. It does, um, there's kind of a low frequency noise and with the electricity through the walls, it can make people feel weird. Well, hopefully you won't feel all that weird, weird when you come out for the ghost tours. Again, happening when? This has been uh, so much fun kind <laughs> yeah. of hearing the stories and I know there's so much more to tell. Yeah, it's been great. Um, Nightmare runs October 19th through 31st, mm -hmm. so uh, come out and see a scary movie. There are family-friendly movies, there are storytelling events, ghost tours, all kinds of stuff. So Thanks for out. keeping the family friendly in there as yeah. well. That's more my level, but right. again, thankfully, nobody really showed up for us today. Maybe they will for you on your ghost tour. So much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. We'll make sure and put all the details on our website as well. <laughs> all right, but here's the deal. They're selling out fast. So if you want to go on these ghost tours, hear more about what I heard, which is really <laughs> cool. Do it today. Call today. I like what you said, hear about what I heard, because yes. you learned a lot, and I've I actually know. heard the rumors before mm -hmm. that it's haunted there. What'd you think? I thought it was, it was very cool stories. I mean, it's people who actually work there, people, famous people, as you just heard, that uh, have maybe felt some things, so I would recommend it. Again, there's movies playing this time of year as well, but I'm looking forward for all their Christmas. There um, you go. Did you do. feel anything? Are you, you're willing to go back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go back. there you go. That's a good tease. <laughs> all right, check our website for more info.